which I have shown here, these are the balloons. Let's say it's a balloon 1, balloon 2, balloon 3 and balloon 4. So every balloon has some width as you can see. This balloon you can see is from 1 to 6. This is one balloon itself. This another balloon is from 2 to 8. One balloon, 1 to 6. Another balloon, 2 to 8. Another balloon, uh, my 7 to 12. As you can see, 7 to 12. And another balloon from 10 to 16. 10 to 16. Now, again, I just plotted that on my number line. That usually how we solve interval problems. Firstly, we imagine that how these intervals will look like on a number line. Now, the problem says that please return me the minimum number of arrows that must be shot to bust all the balloons. Which means that I have to shoot these balloons. As you know, this line is a balloon and I have to shoot these balloons and I have to use minimum number of arrows. Why are they asking for minimum number of arrows? Because they know that if I shoot the arrow like this, with this one arrow, I can shoot these two balloons. If I shoot the arrow like this, with this one arrow, I can shoot only one balloon. So, you can easily see that although they say that you have infinite number of arrows, but still, in worst case, I can shoot one like this, one like this, another like this and another like this with four arrows for sure because i have four intervals or i have, or I have four b balloons in worst case i can take four arrows and i can bust all the balloons but they're asking bro give us minimum number of arrows so i can for sure see that okay one i can shoot this specific one arrow which can shoot balloon one and balloon two then i can shoot this arrow which can actually shoot balloon three and balloon four so so far i have realized i, I can use minimum two balloons now can i minimize this much food much further so you can see maybe i can shoot this but if i shoot this then this balloon is not short which means balloon one and balloon four is also not like not short so i have to shift this to maybe somewhere here but again i have to shift somewhere here so it i can roughly say that, okay for some new number of shoots required will be two i cannot minimize much smaller than two okay great now let's take the next example they here you can see all these again remember all these are the balloon widths and i can shoot one balloon like this i can say i can shoot at one place how many number of balloons comes in that place that's a luck for me so in this as you can see all the balloons are actually not overlapping so i cannot take one shot because here i can easily see that these two balloons balloon one and balloon two are actually overlapping so i actually shot it in between so that two balloons got shot with one arrow right Okay, so you have heard a word overlapping and maybe we have already seen something as overlapping, non-overlapping intervals because we can imagine this line as an interval and we have already seen such kind of problems. That's a hint for us. Okay, great. Let's go on. So in this, you can see that you have to shoot this specific balloon because it is not overlapping with anyone. You have to shoot this balloon, again not overlapping. You have to shoot, shoot, shoot this, you have to shoot this. So for sure, you will require in the worst case, four shots. Okay, great. Now, next comes is, okay, you plotted all these balloons. So, you can shoot the balloon at the location 2. With this one shot, you can see, again, it is ending. The first balloon is from 1 to 2. So, it touches at 2. If Even if you shoot at 2, then still, the balloon 1 will be shot. And same way, balloon 2 will also be shot. Then, balloon 3, balloon 4, you can shoot at location 4. And thus, balloon 3, balloon 4 will be shot. So, minimum required are 2. So far, you have seen that, uh, um, usually in this kind of interval problems, we usually sort the intervals out and usually it is on the basis of its starting index. So as to, okay, imagine, as you can see also, while you were imagining, you have sorted the intervals on the basis of their starting index. Although it is sorted, you might not even know on the basis of ending or starting because it is even same. If I sorted even start from starting or ending, it's still same, still same on both starting and ending. And this also still same on both starting and ending. So you might not even recognize it is sorted. You can see by your eyes, but it is not on the basis of starting or ending. So one thing is for sure, you know that, okay, I will sort these intervals. Now, if these intervals are sorted, now I have to just figure out, I have to just figure out that at what location I should put a cut. At what location I should put a cut that I should get maximum number of overlapping intervals. Now, let's imagine that I am about to place some cut. So I went on, okay, let's imagine, I again, usually we sort it by the basis of start index, right? That's all what we have been doing so far. Every time we have been doing this specific thing only. So let's come on and sort it down. Okay, it is sorted now. Now I will have to find a location so that I, I will put my arrow at that location 
and ultimately i will have maximum again remember the fact one thing is that you have to burst all the balloons and then next thing is you have to use minimum number of arrows so if i have this specific b1 i know for sure i have to burst my even balloon for sure i have to burst my b1 balloon for sure so why can't i just say okay i know it is sorted on the basis of its start index start index start index and start index so if i want to maximize the number of overlapping shots so i can just in the balloon one end in the balloon one end i can just simply put a shot in the balloon one end i can simply put a shot aren what's the benefit of putting a shot at the balloon one end only because one thing is for sure i had to burst balloon one that's one thing and then i thought of what if what if some other balloons was maybe coming in in the in between in before this because we know one thing is for sure that it is sorted by the start index ah it is sorted, it, it is sorted by the start index so for sure for sure other start index is actually before but aryan you saw here what happened if the if the ending is after this shot then it was okay then your strategy was okay but aryan you itself showed you yourself showed that what if your starting and ending would have been before this shot your starting and ending although you can see it is sorted on the basis of its start index but its ending is also before ah uh, then if you just shoot at the last location because it seems obvious i will shoot at the extreme end of my balloon one so that all the balloons or major number of balloons will get shot but then i recognized here itself that if i shot at the end of my balloon one then maybe i miss some balloons I miss some balloons because by this fact, when I'm shooting in the last location, I can see, okay, balloon one and balloon two are shot. Then I will go on to next balloon. Okay, next balloon is nothing but P3. Again, I will go at the end of B3 and then I'll shoot this again. So, so far, but the example itself, it seems okay. Answer is two. But we also saw that we missed some balloon because of it is not necessary that its end is actually also further than the end of my starting of that specific balloon one. So we realized an uh, issue. If we sort by start index, then there can be a chance that if I if I sort by start index, so you can see start, then start, then start. Then if I take the end of my first interval, then um, I might not shoot these two balloons. So rather, I should again. I know one thing. I will have to sort my intervals. So rather, let's try sorting by end intervals. Okay, I sorted by end intervals. Then what happened is it will become as okay. One, it's a first interval. Second, it's a third interval. Now again, I will try the same thing. I will try to shoot on the basis of my first interval. I will sh I will shoot it up. Okay, I will shoot it up. Okay, great. One shot done. And the and the balloon one is burst. Aaron, is the balloon three also burst? Um, logically thinking by your naked eyes, it is. You can see it will also be burst. But programmatically, how will you implement it? That's a question. Cool. But yeah, logically it will be burst. Then you will go at the end of balloon 2. It is also burst. Then you will go at the end of balloon 3. Is it, are you saying, are you, you will actually put one more arrow here again? I will say no, bro. Why no, bro? Because I can see if I am applying a shoot here. If I am applying a shoot here. So I know the last arrow shot. The last arrow shot was at this location. Let's say the location was 8. Now I know one thing for sure is I had to now i'm guessing i had to apply next shot at this location 9 but its length is actually big its starting index is actually let's say at 1 so i know if i'm applying a shot at 1 the next shot the next shot which i'm trying to apply on i know it is for sure its end value is for sure more than the previous shot so end value is more if its start value is less than this arrow shot you see what's happening so i'm applying a shot here I know the end value, the end value, the end value is after me because I have sorted on the basis of its end index. If if anyhow I can check the this interval, this interval, let's say this interval, let's say interval of i. This interval's start value, if it is less than my current shot, current arrow shot, let's say name it as arrow shot. If it is less than my current arrow shot, again less than or equal to my current arrow shot, I'm done. I'm done. What what, what I mean by I'm done? I mean, I don't have to make a new arrow again. I can use this existing arrow shot and this interval will also be shot by this arrow shot. So ultimately what happened with us is that firstly, we have to sort our, again, we are given this array called as intervals, which is points given to us. So firstly, I will have to sort my points. Again, points.begin, points.end. 
Now, by default, this sorting which happens is it's sorting it's sorted on the basis of sat index. So I have to use a custom comparator. This comparator should sort on sort on end index. And again, in the increasing order, increasing order. Now, when this portion is sorted, now you are actually good to start making your busting. So for that, you will have to use an arrow shot at what last location you, sh you shot an arrow. So in the very beginning, I can say my arrow shot was at location minus one. Or I can say, okay, I did not shoot any arrow. Minus one. Okay. And by default, I can say uh, the count of shots were actually also zero. Then I can simply iterate. I can simply iterate on all the arrow shots. So I can say auto my every point I'll go on to and I'll say, okay, the I'll go on to all the points in the entire, which means I'll go on to every interval. Now for every interval, I'll go and firstly have a quick check that if the arrow shot, which I did, the arrow shot, which I did, which is this arrow shot, last arrow shot, which I did, if it is actually more than, again, if it is actually more than or equal to my starting index of this current interval. So if it is more than or equal to my point of zero, then bro, I don't need to have any extra shot. I can try for the next interval. I can simply continue. But if not, if not, but if not, which means as you can see, the for this specific, for this, this was the last arrow shot. This was the last arrow shot. But as I am on onto this interval, I can see it starts actually more than my last arrow shot. So I have to actually do one more shot. So I will say, bro, simply increase the count, count of shot. So I'll increase the count of my shot and I'll say plus plus. And also uh, my new arrow shot location will become the end, will become the end of this existing interval. So my new arrow shot location will actually become the this interval, which is nothing but my point of one because end end location and thus i will have minimum number of count shots minimum number of count shots now usually you will see it actually looks very nice in picture but you'll have to ask the interviewer what is the constraints of the algorithm you can see the constraints are actually your start and end can vary from minus to show 31 and you saw that you have put in your arrow shot initial location as minus one it is only applicable when your coordinates are actually positive. But you saw your coordinates can be also, your coordinates can also be negative. And that too, like you, you saw that your coordinates can actually be negative infinity in integer limit. So you have to do one thing. Either you have to initialize that with long, long, like or maybe long, and then put a number which is more than, more than minus 2 is 31. Or I can say less than minus 2 is 31. So you can either put in uh, long and then minus 1 e 9. Sorry, minus 1 in 10. That's one way. Else, uh, if you want to take still integer, then okay, take integer. Take the first point itself. Take the first point, okay. Point of 1. Because you remember, point of 1 is the end value, is the end in as the is the end, and that to where I will keep my first first arrow shot and then initialize your count shot by one. Because for sure you will use one shots at least. Then you will not go on to points. You will actually go on and iterate on all the points starting from index one because index zero you have sorry it is actually index zero and the end value you have to take so you have to go on to all the indexes that's all the indexes start from index one because index zero you have already covered here so i equal to one i is less than equal to sorry i is less than point dot size and then i plus plus and then i plus plus and then just a small modification that you here keep a i of zero and then here you will keep a i of one i of 1 and that's how you can simply solve it again there are two things i told you either you put a minimum value of your arrow shot which is minus 1 e 10 or you can put a starting okay starting off point of 0 of 1 which is the end of the first interval you can either put it and that's the only code which you have to require that's it let's see the code it's pretty simple so if you look at uh, if we will see that firstly we did a sorting but sorting on the basis of our end index. If end is small, then I have to sort it on the basis of my end index. I cannot sort by, by the basis of its start index. If I even if I want to do sorting on the basis of that, I have to modify my logic a bit. So that's how we go about it. Now, current arrow position, as I figured out, okay, I will put in my first intervals end as the current arrow position because that's the optimal. And for sure, I have used one arrow shot. So use one arrow shot. Now I'll go on from index one, which means I have utilized already index zero and then go on to the end. And then I'll simply check, okay, if the starting is actually less than my current arrow position, which means I can actually shoot this also. 
because i know the ending will for sure be more for sure be because the points of i of 1 it will for sure be more it will for sure be more because i have sorted on the basis of its end index so this will for sure be more this is for sure less so it is in between so for sure if something is between it can shoot it so i can i can actually shoot it and i can simply say no increase of count shot required simply continue and try for next interval if it is not then i have to uh, shoot at that location so new arrow sh new arrow position will become intervals end and also one arrow shot i have used so increase the count by one and ultimately return the count of arrow shots as you can see you did a sorting that's a bottleneck of this question so the time will be o of n log n and you are not using any extra space apart from sorting internal extra space used so for java and c plus plus it's o of log n while for python is open and that's how you solve it cool bye bye take care i hope that it's an easy question but again interval questions are never easy considering how you go about it and they can become very complex people start adding if conditions on lot because they end up giving wrong answers a lot so it's a very good question to learn. Bye-bye.